What's going on, Blossom is back, and welcome back to another episode of South Drives. Today, we're going to be reviewing the UK 2005 to 2009 carbon fiber that is currently out in the store. Now, what makes this pack so special is that it's one of the few packs which highly increases your chances of getting a super light. When I mean highly increase, I mean because we never get Caterham carbon fibers because that would be so OP. Because if we're only getting ultra rares, I think we're only getting one Caterham ultra rare and it's an incredibly good car. It's a Blossom choice. Uh, and if we were opening a regular ceramic, that would be basically every epic in the game up for grabs. So this is one of the few packs where the Caterham is eligible in, which means that you kind of have a slightly higher chance, actually a significantly higher chance at getting the Super Light. So this is what makes this pack special. This basically is the Caterham Super Light pack. So with that said, I'm going to be reviewing the pack and you guys know all of the ranks that I've been doing already. Usually I like to make creative names that rhyme but I'm really stupid and sometimes all these creative names gets me confused <laughs> to what's amazing and what's bad so we're gonna go with priority one two three and four because that's really easy to understand and last but not least we of course have hot garbage these are cars where I just cannot see a situation where they would be useful in so with that said let's get into it the first one is going to be the Aston Martin V8 now one interesting thing is I want to do control can I do wait a minute I guess I should have tried this earlier. <gasps> you can zoom in. I should have been doing this from the start. So see, now everyone can see the pictures better, which is really cool. Uh, so yeah, we're going to start with the Aston Martin V8 Vantage. This one's going to be priority three, in my opinion. Uh, it handles just eh. You know, the zero to 60 is eh. And the top speed is also eh. It's a very average car, but I don't see myself using this too much because the N400 exists, which is the next car that we're going to talk about, which I'm going to put into priority two. For a little bit more RQ, you're getting a car which is a lot well, a lot more well balanced, just handles a little better, zero to 60 is a little lower, top speed is a little higher. The Aston Martin V8 Vantage, I would say, is the epitome. It's the embodiment of just average. And the N400 is just a slightly better version of that. So next up are going to be the Bentleys. And of course, as per usual disclaimer, these are going to be my opinions uh, on how I'm ranking the car. So let me know down in the comments below if you agree or disagree with me. So next up is the Bentley Arnage Final Series. Now this one's going to be priority four. I just can't see myself using this in any situation, shape, or form. In fact, I'm actually going to bump it down to hog garbage. I think that's a bit more right. It just doesn't handle. It doesn't handle. The 0-60 to 60 is really bad. And, you know, it has no MRA. It has a high top speed, but it doesn't matter if you have no MRA. Next up on the list is the Bentley Arnage T. Now the Bentley Arnage T, for the same reason, I'm also going to put it into hog garbage. Both the Arnage T and the Arnage Final Series are cars where it's just like there's really no direction to put them because the handling is so far gone. It's so much of a lost cause that you probably don't want to 233 or 323 it because it's going to be able to hit like what 84 handling? That isn't very impressive. Last but not least is the Bentley Azure T, and that's going to go into hot garbage. These three cars are literally the same 525252767. Two, Six, seven, six. I think the only reason why the Azure is lower in our queue is because I do believe that the Azure is low. Correct me if I'm wrong because I don't actually own it because it's hot garbage. Um, I actually have the Bentley Arnage T Max and I 332'd it, never used it once. I just did it because I had nothing else to work on. Next up on the list is going to be the Bentley Brooklyns. Now the Bentley Brooklyns, a lot of people have said a lot of good things about it, but when you say a lot of good things about a Bentley, it's not going so far because I, I would say that the the threshold or I guess the level of Bentleys are just incredibly low so when a, it's not hard for a, a Bentley to stand out and the Brooklyn's I guess kind of stands out I know that people are saying that this is a car with decent MRA it has the highest top speed out of all the Bentleys we've seen so far in my opinion I would 332 the Bentley Brooklyn's I have never I think I've only gotten it once or twice I've used it once and twice uh, I've used it twice about you know maybe many months many moons ago um, but if I do get a Brooklyn's again just because I'm kind of at the stage in my garage where I don't have any ultras to work on I would 
probably 3-3-2 it. I've seen a lot of people say 3-3-2 the Brooklyn's. It has decent MRA, fair play. I'll give it priority three higher than the other ones we've seen so far. Now, next up on the list is going to be the Ford Focus RS. This is going to be priority four. That's going to be a bit of a hot take. I know some people are going to be like, Blossom, what are you talking about? That car handles incredibly well. The thing is, I, I'm never in a situation where I need to use the Ford Focus RS. If anything, I will always make space for the black Ford Focus, I think, RS 500, which, you know, once again, handles about the same. Zero to 60 is incredibly low, uh, or I guess incredibly low were compared to the Ford Focus RS in relative terms. Higher top speed that's going to be the car that you want the green one kind of sucks now this is a car that i've unpacked five six times and i've used it every single time not once have I ever needed to use this car? Whether it be a UK Ford event, front wheel drive event, or even the Christmas collection, not once did I need to invest in this car. There are always better options lying around. Next up on the list is the Jaguar S-Type R. That's going to be hot garbage as well. It's one of the Jags that came in great exhibition where everyone is just kind of like, eh. You know, not only does it not look good, it doesn't handle well. The zero to 60 isn't very low. Uh, it's all around just a very disappointing car. Next up on the list is the Jaguar XKR 4.2S. That's gonna be priority three. Now, if I was following my heart and my personal bias, I would put it in priority two just because I really like the car. But unfortunately, I'm not. This is an unbiased review and I genuinely think that this is a priority three car. Handles, okay. Zero to 60 relatively, yeah, it's actually not very good, but the top of it is relatively high. Uh, what what makes the XKR special, however, is that it has really good MRA. If I remember correctly, this Jag actually has better MRA than the Bentley Brooklyn's, and they share the same zero to 60 with the Jag having, you know, much more handling. Now, albeit the Brooklyn's is medium ground cleared, so we have to take that into account, but the XKR has MRA. It has potential. It's weird because it handles quite well as well for an ultra rare, so it's one of those cards where I would say if you want a 233 or 332, I mean, I wouldn't be, you know, judgmental either way. I feel like both are valid options to max the car but at the end of the day even if you have the jaguar xkr max they're just better cars out there that does the job the biggest i guess achilles heel for the jaguar xkr is going to be that tvr seac because it has a lower zero to 60 with just about as good mra so unfortunately when it comes to the drag you're going to want to use that tvr which is also around the same year uh which is also a great exhibition uh next up on the list is going to be the lotus europa s the lotus europa s is going to be priority four it's lightweight and it handles okay, but it doesn't handle as well as other cars within its RQ. So like the Renault Desir or even uh, the Lotus Exige S2, which we'll get to a bit, or even the RQ50 uh, Lotus Elise 135 that you get from the campaign. Uh, that car I think is better. It has a lower zero to 60. What holds the Europa S back is that the zero to 60 on this car is quite weak and the handling isn't like a standout. It's not like Exige S280. 83 is okay, but it's just not a standout for what this car is. Next up on the list is the Lotus Europa SE. Once again, a very average car. The MRI is okay, but the top speed isn't very high. The 0 to 60 is okay, but the top speed is very high. The handling is okay, but there are cars with much better handling, like 88, 85, 87, 86. So 83 stock for a 61 RQ car that is supposed to be a twisty. I guess it's more of a hybrid car because it has an MRA and relatively low zero to, uh, zero to 60. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's just really just average. You know, it's not a great all-rounder. It's not a bad all-rounder. It's just an average car. And I think that priority three is where it deserves to be. Next up on the list is the Lotus Exige S2. Once again, another priority three car. I know what you're thinking, Blossom. Lightweight car, 88 handling. How is this priority three? Why is it not two or one? The main problem with the Exige S2 is that the zero to 60 on this car is so weak. It's way too slow. 5.8 zero to 60 is way too slow. I mean, the RQ50 Lotus Elise 135 has a lower zero to 60 for six RQ less. Now, granted, this car handles incredibly well, but my, I guess, uh, critique for the Exige S2 is that although it is, I would say, half a step ahead of the other cars in its competition, including like the Lotus 340R, it's two steps behind in the zero to 60. So unfortunately, the positives don't outweigh the negatives for this car. So at the end of the day, you're gonna wanna use the Circuit EV, the Desire, the Lotus Elise 135, the Lotus 340R, or even the Lotus Exige S1. So unfortunately, the Lotus Exige S2, the highest it's gonna see is priority three next up is the range rover uh sport that's gonna be priority four only because for 53 rq the handling is eh 
It's not good, but there are rovers out there that are higher in our queue that have lower handling than the Range Rover Sport. And I think that those rovers are the ones that I'm going to set aside for haul garbage. We've actually talked about them in the last pack review. Next up is the TVR Tuscan Convertible. And this is going to be, once again, priority three. It's looking like a very average pack, isn't it? The super light pack. TVR Tuscan Convertible, uh, very low zero to 60. Unfortunately, it's going to lose to the Tamora either way or the Roof DTR or even the Charger 3 in, I think, the quarter mile, perhaps. This might be able to be the Charger 3, but definitely not the, the, the Tamora or the BTR. The DVR Tuscan Convertible, unfortunately, is a good dragster, but just not the best. And unfortunately, I have to give it priority 3. Next up are going to be the Epics. So, uh, the first one is the Aston Martin DBS V12. That's going to be priority four. This is an Epic that I've never used once, not even in the 2007 final. Uh, unfortunately, the handling for an Epic is uh, subpar. It's really subpar. Zero to 60 is eh. Top speed is high to be fair, but the MRA isn't fantastic. Next up on the list is going to be the Aston Martin V12 Vantage. Now this one I would say is much better. Uh, priority three in my opinion. It handles a lot better. The zero to 60, however, not that strong, but the uh, Pump speed is a lot higher compared to the DBS V12. Next up on the list is the Bentley Continental Flying Spurt. This is going to be hot garbage. This was given out, I think, as a tier one prize in the Tri-Series uh, qualifiers. Remember those? Uh, Tri-Series qualifiers for the P1 GTR. When Hutch gives out an Epic, you know that the Epic is trash. The only time Hutch gives out great Epics are either in A, those prize events, or B, in uh, a final as like a tier three car. Sometimes they give out some Really good epics for that but usually when it's a tier one car in a qualifiers for a tri-series and if it's an epic it's a really bad one and that is no exception next up on the list is the bentley continental gt i think that's going to be priority four it has that four wheel drive niche but it doesn't handle and the zero to 60 is atrocious it has a high top speed but it doesn't have the mra to back it up uh next up on the list is the caterham csr this is going to be priority three the, unfortunately for the caterham csr for a Caterham, the handling is abysmal. 86 is sad for Caterhams, okay? Like, bear in mind that this is a car that is going to be competing against other Lotai or other Donker Vorts, which are capable of hitting 89 and 88, uh, mostly 89 and 89, uh, 88 exclusively. So 86 is really, really bad. What has the CSR got is that low 0 to 60. The 0 to 60 in the CSR is Muito bueno. Is that the word I'm looking for? Italian for good, something like that. It's 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 good. It's good, but it's not a dragster. It doesn't have a high top speed and it doesn't have good MRA. At most, with that zero to 60, you can put it on a quarter mile and that's it. Uh, when it comes to the twisties, there are better options. Next up on the list is the Caterham Superlight and that's gonna be the first priority one. That car needs no introduction. It is an absolute beast. And I guarantee you that people are going to be open this, opening this pack solely because of the reduced rates of getting the Caterham Superlight or I guess the increased rates of getting the caterham or the increased chances because of the reduced carpool <laughs> of getting the super light r500 next up on the list is the jaguar xkr that's going to be hot garbage followed by the lotus 211 supercharge once again it's going to be joining the r500 in priority one handles incredibly well very lightweight car zero to 60 is still strong although it is a huge difference from the caterham super light the 211 supercharge zero to 60 is still very good so it just goes to show how fantastic the super light r500 is next up on the list is the lotus evora 280 that's going to be priority three handles pretty well mra is good but the zero to 60 is very weak uh but that being said though and like i said handles well mr is pretty good it's an average car next up on the list is the lotus exige 265e that is going to be priority two and also the exige scura but the exige cup 250 is going to be priority one because although these three lows high are all rq72 the orange one is just better <laughs> it is the lightest among the three and it has the most MRA MRA out of the three. Um, and as you can see, both of them are 4.0, both of them are 89. This one is 3.9 and 88, but at the end of the day, the Exige Cup is the car that you want. And unfortunately, I have unpacked the Scura and I've unpacked about three Exige 265Es, but I've never unpacked an Exige Cup 260. It do be like that sometimes. I can't complain though, because I have the, the supercharge and the super light. Uh, next up is going to be the Mercedes-Benz SLR McLaren. This is going to be a priority two car. Now, I remember I gave it some pretty bad reviews when it came to just RQ77. 
if we're just looking at RQ77 and, and judging it by every car in the game, by every RQ77 in the game, it's actually not that strong. But when it stands alone as I think the only RQ77 that you can get from this pack, the Mercedes-Benz SLR McLaren isn't that bad. The 0-60 to is low, the MRI is okay, top speed is high, but the handling, I do have to say, is quite weak. Uh, especially since most RQ77 performance tire cars nowadays are capable of hitting the 87s to the 88s, and that makes a huge difference in the twisty tracks. Uh, now, next up on the list is the TVR Sagaris. That's going to be priority four. This is a car that I really never see around, but for its RQ, the 0-60 to is respectable, and the top speed is also respectable, but that thing does not handle, let's be real. Uh, next up on the list is the TVR Tuscan S. Really, I want to put this in hog garbage. I really, really, really want to put it in hog garbage. And I will. And I will. The 0 to 60 is good for RQ65. It is. But no MRA. Top speed is high. It also doesn't handle. I have to put it as hot garbage. I don't think I've, I have known a single person that actually maxed a Tuscan S. Uh, now, last but not least are going to be the legendaries. Now, these legendaries, I have to say, aren't really all that great. Uh, really, if you want to open the pack, it's really your, the super light that you want to go for. Don't ever fuse a legendary, but these cars, in my opinion, are not priority one. At least these three, and then the Aston Martin is priority one. Like I said, I think it's the Aston Martin, no bias, one of the best RQ81 uh, cars in the game, because I think it's only one of two RQ81s that are capable of hitting a hundred handling or over hundred or more handling, the other car being the Viper ACR. Uh, the Aston Martin V12 also has a decent 0 to 60. It's not the best, but it's okay. High top speed and respectable MRA, making it a great all rounder. The aerial atoms are fine. I'm giving them priority too, just because there are better, better aerial atoms in the game, and they're both going to lose to the super light regardless. So you want to go for the super light. Uh, so at the end of the day, this is the super light pack. This is going to be my ranking. Let me know if you agree or disagree with me. But at the end of the day, should you open it? Honestly, my verdict is no, I'm not going to open it. You shouldn't open it as well, unless you truly are desperate for a super light. If you, this is the best thing about this pack. It's the super light pack. It is reduced, I guess, higher chances of getting a super light because there's a reduced amount of epics that you can get, you know, compared to a ceramic pack or a UK carbon fiber. So if you are desperate for the super light, I would say, okay, fine, grit your teeth and go for it, but be ready to be disappointed because there are more cars in this pack that would disappoint me than cars that would, you know, get me excited. Truly, to be honest, I only care about the priority ones. Even if I got the aerial atoms, if I unpack this, if I was going to unpack the pack, I wouldn't be too excited about it. So anyway, guys, let me know what you think about my review down in the comments below. Let me know if you're going to open the pack or not. And if you do, let me know what you get. But anyway, I hope you guys have a great day. I'm going to stay safe, wash your hands, and blossom out. Peace.